Hey guys, my name is Aaron and welcome to the tech news here on Gear Up, episode 22. And the first thing on our docket today is the reviews are out for the DJI Mini 3. And most agree that it's way more capable than before. That is if you can swallow the price of entry. Yeah, are you ready for this? $670 just for the drone alone, remote not included. And I know we're having some kind of global chip supply shortage, but $220 more than the Mini 2's launch price is downright ridiculous. Did you say ridiculous? <laughs> and again, I repeat, this is without a remote. I will admit that I am envious of the huge bump in abilities, like that fantastic upward firing, sideways shooting, 4K 60 frames per second camera system, and not to mention the front and rear obstacle avoidance. The only downer about that latter one is you better watch your surroundings while you're flying sideways, like parallel with your subject. And I also reported a few weeks ago that the runtime is longer now at 47 minutes, but the caveat to that is that's only possible if you fork up even more for endurance batteries. And with those batteries installed, the 3's weight will no longer be under 250 grams. So you need to pay up to the FAA in order to fly. Let me ask you this. What do you think of the current crop of flip phones? Because I personally am a huge fan of like the Motorola Razr 5G 2020 and the Samsung Galaxy Flip 4. It's just a pity that it costs like a small country to buy brand new and their battery life is like as long as a DJI Mini 3. But nevertheless, it seems like Samsung and Motorola are keeping the fires burning with new 2022 versions coming soon. And between the two, I'm particularly excited the most about the third gen Razer because now the design is more akin to the Flip 3 rather than the toy-like look of the current version. And now there will be three cameras in the rear as opposed to just one. So what we'll be seeing is a 50 megapixel main shooter, a 13 megapixel wide angle macro hybrid, plus a 32 megapixel selfie unit. And also another spec bump will be in the SOC department where the Razer will be reportedly utilizing a Gen 1 Snapdragon. So with Motorola seemingly laying down the gauntlet, I'm curious to see how Samsung responds. It's gonna be exciting. Okay, now it's time for a new segment called News Flash. Bose is laying off staff because of its declining sales in sleep earbuds, frames, sunglasses, and sound control hearing aids, as well as enroaching competition from brands like Sony and Apple. They reportedly scrapped plans for a sleeping headphone, but that could have just been a regular project reprioritization. Next, Apple is ditching lightning cables and going USB-C in 2025, starting with the iPhone 15. Woohoo! Perfect timing. You're only like, what, six, seven, eight years behind? The Google I.O. keynote event came and went last week and personally it was one of the least interesting keynotes in a long time. But the gist of it is that Googs might finally be serious about taking on Apple and its ecosystem. For one, the rumored Pixel Watch was finally confirmed and as I reported before, there will be a newer version of Wear OS 3.0, whatever that means or entails. And there's also going to be much tighter integration with Google services such as Assistant, Google Home, Google Maps, YouTube Music, and also in terms of fitness, Fitbit. I'm not sure how Google Fit, you know, fits into the whole equation, but at least Google will now be able to like coax uh, Fitbit loyalists to cross shop the Pixel Watch. That's my guess anyway. And if I were you, I'll pro if you watched it, I'll probably also take the talk about sleep tracking and heart rate tracking with a grain of salt because a cynic can watch that and can easily surmise and say that that's all the watch is capable of. But two things. First of all, look at the sensor package. There's like a buttload of sensors back there. And second, Google did say that they will release more info over the coming months. So we'll probably start hearing, you know, buzzwords like SPO2 or body temperature sensors soon enough. Another re-attack on Apple is a Tensor-powered Pixel tablet coming in 2023. And I heard rumors that it's gonna be a Google Home hub primarily and then a tablet secondary. You probably remember Google lost interest in the tablet form factor a few years back, but this renewed interest in this part of market alongside the heavily developed tablet-friendly Android 12L seems to be part of Google's like multi-pronged push back into territories currently dominated by Apple and to a lesser degree, Samsung. Oh, yeah. Now, there were a lot of details shared about the Pixel Buds Pro. And man, they're feature dropping the heck out of this thing, guys. It's coming in July for 200 bucks and there will be active noise cancellation, finally. Multi-point Bluetooth connection, Google Assistant on call just like before, spatial audio, and a claimed seven hours of listening time with active noise cancellation on. 
Mm, I guess we'll have to wait and see about that one. And it seems like all these features could possibly be fruits from the company acquiring patents and talents uh, from companies like Dysonics that handles 3D audio, Tempow, an audio wearable maker, as well as RevX Technologies recently. The keynote event also confirmed the Pixel 7 series, but obviously offered very little details. And those that they did share, we mostly knew already, like the second gen Tensor SoC, a fall 2022 launch similar to the 6, but the standout part that they talked about this time is the new aluminum camera bar. It's a great idea, besides the distinctive look, it's definitely one less thing to break, unlike the glass one on the 6. And speaking of the 6, the $450 6A is launching at the same time as the Buds Pro, so in July. So what have we got here specs wise? Tensor from the regular 6 and 6 Pro, a smaller 6.1 inch screen, which means a smaller form factor, just by a little bit. Uh, only 60 hertz refresh rate, so at least it'll be a battery sipper. Uh, some bits that Google kind of cheaped out on us though is like Gorilla Glass 3, really? And the rear camera system from the Pixel 5. Again, really? Yeah, so which would you rather buy guys? The smaller 6A with a mishmash of old and new specs or wait for the 7. And finally, in case you haven't noticed, the Sony WH-1000XM5 has been launched. And I was right guys, the bloody thing doesn't fold into a ball anymore. This thing just sits flat in the giant case, not a fan of it. And the redesigned driver that I was talking about, it's now smaller at 30 millimeters as opposed to 40. But a lot of reviewers are saying out there that the sound has not suffered. In fact, it's gotten a lot better. More details, more energy, just a lot more clarity. Um, but there is like a lack of driving power as opposed to the 40. So I'll reserve my judgment once I get my own copy. So if you'd like me to review it, upvote this thing, like this video like crazy, and I will get to it. So there you have it guys, that's the end of the news today. Thank you so much for watching this. Remember to subscribe if you like what I'm doing and I'll see you on Friday for the next video and also, you know, visit my Patreon page, thumbs up if you like it. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love y'all very much. Have a great week.